can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cured. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. I'm Carol Meekins and we hope you're having a good day so far. I am excited to introduce you to a very special Waukesha County woman. She is 92 years old, the mother of 14 children. But this lady from Neshota still has the time and energy to serve others during the COVID-19 crisis. <laughs> You are looking at some of the kids and grandkids of 92-year-old Catherine Moran. Here, they're performing for her 90th birthday. Family and service have been the fabric of Catherine Moran's life. She's the mother of 14 children, 36 grandchildren, and 11 great-grandchildren. There's so much to celebrate about Moran's life. Perhaps her sixth-born child and namesake can say it best. The mantra that I always walk away with when I'm with mom is that she will wake up every day and say, how can I serve others? Moran was moved to action when she got a notice from Horizon Healthcare. And they sent out an email saying, urgent, urgent, we need sheets, we need people to make face masks. So she got busy. Catherine made 200 masks for health care workers, then dozens more for family and friends. Catherine is also a quilter and is famous for her beautiful creations. She's created hundreds of quilts. She didn't even start sewing until later in life. But you started at 70. Yes, I started at 70. I decided when I retired at 70, I needed to find something to do in my spare time. Because re bridge wasn't enough and reading wasn't enough and going out to lunch wasn't enough and seeing all my family was not enough. So, somebody told me about this magic little thing called a rotary cutter. That's because Catherine has a tough time using her hands. In her teens, she remembers answering a call to help for World War II soldiers. I was in high school, Carol. I was in high school. Oh, you were in high school? Aww. Yes. And <laughs> what they would let us do was to knit squares for the Red Cross. But this mom has seen ups and downs. There were money problems. She was forced to raise her large family alone for many years. There was alcoholism involved, and so I was divorced at my 25th wedding anniversary. <laughs> but her spirit and resiliency prevailed after her divorce. The only skills I had was I had taught, and I did have a teaching degree, and I could type. And so I had so many children, I didn't want to go back into a classroom. I didn't think I'd do a fair job. I didn't want to face that many other children. I had my own enough problem. So I took my typing skill, and I went out and got a typing job at Olympia Hotel in Oconomowoc and worked my way up to being catering manager over there. Every time that I ever thought about anything, it was keep the family together. And they all worked together to keep themselves together. And they became very close, I think, and remain close. Her daughter admits. I can't keep up with her energy at 92. She's crazy. Moran has started a unique way to mark this historical pandemic. She's designing a quilt called Quarantine Memories 2020. It contains patches of 36 houses, one for each grandkid. They will share a memory of this trying time. Here are some of the messages. Grateful for family, bread baking, binge watching, dominoes, cocktails, cribbage, distance learning and Zoom meetings. That's what has kept me going because I have enough children to give things to. When finished, this patchwork will be a historical family document for the future and a visual link to the grandkids' heritage. Respect of the generations is something that, you know, we need to emulate. Hopefully through all that's going on, people are starting to grab onto the family unit a little bit more and see the value in all generations. Catherine's secret for staying spry at 92 years young? Keep moving and don't be selfish. I think the secret is to keep busy. I can't not be doing something. If you have things outside of yourself, that it, and if you have like this craft that you can do and you're happy doing it, 
and that but you can think about the person you were making it for and going to be giving it to. It just keeps your life going. And what lessons does she want her grandkids and great grandkids to learn from her? That they like me would be nice. <laughs> that they respect me and that they want to do things for me. And I think that teaches them a wonderful lesson to be able to help an older person. And in that, they learn it's not just, you know, for themselves, that they are responsible for the community and that they should be using their talents to help other people. And I think my grandchildren do a wonderful job of that, and my children. Perhaps this quote in Catherine's home is a symbol for all of us. Families are like old quilts. Although they tend to unravel at times, each can be stitched back together with love. Such an inspiration. Catherine, by the way, has two more great-grandchildren on the way. So congratulations, Catherine. Well, this week's For Positive includes a gift for a mom and a birthday milestone. First off, a present for a mom. It's this horse. It actually danced a jig for Catherine at her nursing home in Pleasant Prairie. Inside the costume, Catherine's daughter and son-in-law. They pranced around the front yard. And of course, this brought her laughter and showed a lot of love. Number two, Doris was out on her daily walk in Shorewood and came across painted stones and she loved them so much that she snapped a picture and sent it to us. These colorful rocks are in the 4,000th block of North Murray in Shorewood if you'd like to check them out. And our third positive comes from Carroll University. Each year the school holds a decorating contest for graduation caps. Well, this year's winner quite fittingly decorated her cap with the class of 2020 and guess what? The zeros, you see what they look like, they are toilet paper. She flushed out the competition with this. Congratulations to all of the graduates. And finally, we want to say happy birthday to Ella Mae Clausen. She turned 102 last weekend. The Heartland woman still lives in her home and she still drives to town and to church. Neighbors say she's still very sharp. So they saluted her with a happy birthday parade. And that is well deserved. Well, a few weeks ago, Milwaukee Circuit Court Judge Derek Mosley sat here right next to me. He shared how he's doing four years after his kidney transplant. Well, shortly after that interview, he was diagnosed with COVID-19. Katie Crowther talked to him about his fight to survive. Some might say the intensive care unit is an unlikely place for new friendship to form. Well, Judge Derek Mosley and his new lifelong friend were reunited today, saw each other for the first time since Mosley was released from the hospital, and I was there for it. It's so good to actually see you without all your garb on. It's really to, to see you and to know that you're at home and... It's emotional for Judge Derek Mosley to think back on his time in the ICU, especially one night in particular, in isolation, forced to lay on his stomach with his head up to help open his lungs. I'm in the bed and um, the doctor's talking to me. We're on the phone talking. He's telling me that I'm at this weird stage where, you know, I could either get better and things are good or this is the stage where they see people just bottom out. His case was very delicate. He has a, his, a history of a kidney transplant. He's highly susceptible to developing infections. There was a strong possibility that when the sun rose, that he was going to be on a ventilator. I got real scared. I mean, I'm telling you, it was almost like clockwork. Just the door opens up and Kristen's like, hey, I've got this. I got someone I want you to talk to. And I'm like, what is she talking about? And then she puts the iPad up and it's my wife and my two daughters. And, oh, it was, we laughed, we cried. It meant a lot to me because honestly, at that point, I wasn't sure if I was going to ever see them again. His nurse, Kristen, knew it would be the best medicine in the world. It was really moving when he was, when his family was on the phone and, I had never seen any of my patients' children on an iPad video before. He was just so brave. One would have never, you just would never have known really the gravity of what he was going through because he was, he was there showing his little girls that 
daddy was coming home and that it was just so beautiful. I cried. After that call, Kristen had to check on others. Judge Mosley was alone again. The tears and feeling of hopelessness creeping back in. I hear this chair kind of slide up next to me and then someone grabs my, oh my God, someone grabs my hand and, um, and it was just right on time because because I was at my, my darkest moment right there. And she came at the right time and said that um, you're not alone. Um, I'm going to be here with you and we're going to get through this together. And just like that, two strangers became family, forming a bond that Mosley says saved his life. Wow, such a powerful story. And there's more to it. Coming up next, you're going to hear more from Judge Mosley and his nurse and who they want to thank and also their plea to the public. Welcome back now to part two of Katie Crowther's interview with Milwaukee Judge Derek Mosley. After surviving coronavirus, he warns people to keep taking precautions to protect themselves and their families. I went from the emergency room to the ICU in a matter of 30 minutes. Judge Derek Mosley still doesn't know how he contracted COVID-19, but as the symptoms first came on, he knew something was not right. His shortness of breath kept getting worse. Not being able to breathe is probably the scariest thing ever. I had congestion, I had a cough, had aches and pains, and then I was dizzy. Even more difficult than physical symptoms was the isolation and fear he wouldn't see his wife and daughters again. I couldn't be more thankful for the Milwaukee community and the phone calls, the texts, but truthfully, it's that woman right there, Krista, that made it all possible. Nurse Kristen Lisman stayed by Judge Mosley's side on the most critical night of his care. You know, I mean, she's healthy, completely healthy, and I'm sick, and she sits down next to me, grabs my hand, and just, you know, makes me feel like a human being, right? COVID-19 has taken many things away from us, loving and supporting each other, and, and Really, that is the essence of our humanity, and it can't take that away. Judge Mosley is healthy again and reunited with his family, but he thinks about so many others still fighting and those who didn't make it. In Milwaukee County, the virus disproportionately impacting African Americans. There's so many people on social media who think this is a hoax or this isn't a big deal. The important thing for me is for people to realize that people are dying. And when you're on the brink of it, it it really hits home. It's a message Kristen shares as she continues to help other COVID-19 patients every day. Let's do what's being asked. Let's stomp this out so that there doesn't have to be another Mr. Mosley in bed 19. Absolutely. And Katie, thank you for these great reports. So profound. And Judge Mosley, we are so happy that you are better and still with us. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we showed you a CAPCO plan to send messages to frontline workers. Gather your family, call on friends and neighbors to join in and create cards, letters, and artwork that we can distribute to our healthcare workers and our seniors. They called the initiative Hero Mail Call. CAPCO asked and you delivered. President Jim Kazmarek has an update for Positively Milwaukee viewers. Take a listen. Hey Carol, Jim Kazmarek from Capco's Mail Call. Just wanted to give you a quick update. Look at the cards and letters that are starting to come in. Milwaukee is definitely answering the mail call. God bless you, Milwaukee. We've received thousands of cards and letters already for our seniors and for our health care workers, but the requests are heavy. We are getting so many requests for this because it's making such a great impact. Thousands more are asking for us. Look at this and thank you to everybody who's participated. Check out the Capco Hero mail call for more details. It's far from not too late to get involved. Thank you, Positively Milwaukee, for sharing this word. And thank you, Milwaukee, for answering the mail call. Uh, Milwaukee is doing its part. And as Jim mentioned, you can still send in your cards and letters for seniors and frontline workers. Go to HeroMailCall.com. For more information, we'll put that link on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. 
Coming up, we're going to introduce you to identical twins who got accepted to more than three dozen colleges. Tell me how would you feel? Tell me what would you do? And an inspiring video made in Milwaukee to combat cruelty and hate. Welcome back. Getting into college can be extremely competitive, but as digital reporter James Groh shows us, a set of Milwaukee twins makes it look easy. These identical twins from Milwaukee have a lot more in common than just looks. Livingstone College, Ripton College, Chicago University, Xavier University. Ariel and Ariana Williams were both accepted into 37 colleges and combined to receive more than $1 million in scholarships. Honestly, we're pushing for 40 college acceptances, but we ended up getting like 30, 37. 37. I was like, oh man, but it's like, we still did good. Right. The seniors at Dr. Howard Fuller Collegiate Academy had a lot of schools to choose from, but both decided on Marquette University to study nursing. 37 college acceptances means these girls are smart. In fact, they have the top two highest GPAs in their graduating class. To do, you can do anything that you want to do as long as you put your mind to it. They will also be the first members of their family to go to college. Congrats, grads. You deserve it. Double success. Congratulations, ladies. And Marquette is very proud and will be happy to have you both. Well, often when young people are bullied, they never get over it. The pain is palpable. But one Milwaukee man has found a positive way to combat cruelty. Shane Ashton still feels the sting of being bullied as a youngster. Daily, you know, bullying and the worst form, I guess, you know, for a long time. And that it's something that doesn't, it stays with you. It doesn't go away. It stays with you forever. He can barely speak about it when pressed for details, but words are not needed. I can see the trauma in his eyes. And I can just tell you, looking at you, you are still dealing with it. Yeah. But music is Ashton's weapon against the trauma. It's um, something that's been a constant in my life. Um, that's always made me feel like I'm good enough, like in some way, you know, how they all try, you know, to break me down growing up and everything. This was one thing that I could hold over them, like, you know, you can't touch this, I have this. Shane Ashton is the composer behind Brighter Days, recently released by the Office of Violence Prevention. This is my, you know, my light. I'm glad to be a part of a project like this that hopefully will make other people deal with things that they're going through because I know, you know, so many people do and are. This song starring local artists is a call for acceptance of all people and for the abolition of hate. Here's the final rendition of Brighter Days. I'm yawning, thanking God for another day. Some people can be so evil and ask God like I sway. All my life ain't been right, but it still held me in your arm. That's why I love my cross charm. That's why I wear my cross charm. We all people living in no sequel. We all are equal. Let's love each other like a sister and a brother, no matter who see. You. Let's not repeat, but never forget the struggles we all been through. Remember Romans 3:23. That's right, we all sin too. <laughs> The time is now to come together, no matter what color or oh, whatever. It shouldn't matter, black or white. Oh, you know we shouldn't. You'll never look good, making someone look bad. That will never be cool, making someone look sad. And put yourself in their shoes. What if it was you? Tell me, how would you feel? Tell me, what would you do? What would you do? How do you hate someone you don't understand? without good reason How do you fall someone who's without a shoulder? How could you silence them? We all have a voice It's time to make change It's time to open our eyes It's time to rally And it's time to
un hombre sincero, no vago, callejero, maleante o pistolero, guarantee the richest parts of any culture born in poverty, honestly, if we speak this art of evil, probably be looked upon as liars speaking falsities, no comparing these sentiments, because it's love and it's hate, they don't mix like blood and oil, only love elevates, but what's uplifted to the youth is what we shouldn't demonstrate, so let's coexist, separate the real from the fake, so let's coexist and separate the fear from the hate, so let's coexist and break bread, I'll hand you a plate, take the time to get to know Noah's, you won't hear what they say Yesterday was so dark, so I'm looking to tomorrow Yesterday was too dark, but I'm hopeful for them brighter days Yeah, I'm hopeful for them brighter days Yeah, yeah, yeah are hoping for brighter days. Thank you to the Office of Violence Prevention for that. We put that video on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. When we return, my quote of the week. Each week I like to leave you with an inspirational thought. Today's quote comes from philosopher Gautama Buddha and he said, one moment can change a day, one day can change a life, and one life can change the world. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great week. Stay safe and stay positively Milwaukee.